What is going on guys? Jerry the Mobile Mechanic here. How's everybody doing today? Today we're going to show you how to use a Harbor Freight compression tester. We are working on a 2000 Jeep Cherokee with a 6 cylinder, it's a 4.0 liter V6 engine. Now in order to do a compression test, when you get the compression um, kit from Harbor Freight, this is the um, part number and everything. It's a cheap uh, compression tester. It's not super expensive, but it'll give you fairly accurate readings on this and it's not super expensive it's not like buying one that's from Maco snap-on or any of these um, big tool distributors um, so it will work for especially for any of you DIYers or guys that are just doing stuff and on the weekends in your garage and you kind of want to save some money on taking it maybe to a mechanic or kind of knowing or having some information on your vehicle prior to having any repairs done to the vehicle now this is also a, a brand new spark plug for this vehicle since I've had problems on this vehicle and it had some um, misfires here and there i know that the coil uh, ignition coil block on this was bad so i went ahead and replaced it and i got new spark plugs but i know sometimes it would have misfires from time to time on different cylinders because i would check the spark plugs and some of them were burning rich and some of them um, were burning okay or they were firing in the proper firing order and there wasn't really a problem with the um, discoloration of the actual spark plug now i tell everybody that's going to use this type of compression tester and you don't know what type of fitting you need on your vehicle. Now, this is just a small um, compression tester. It's not a master kit where it'll work for every year making model vehicle. It might not work for European cars. I'm not sure yet. I haven't tried it on a BMW, so don't quote me on that. But I know for a fact this will get you by for some domestic vehicles like Ford, Chevys, Chryslers, um, and so on and so forth. So what I tell uh, anybody that's going to use a compression tester, grab an old spark plug. When you're doing a compression tester, grab the spark plug and look at the threads. Now, try to match it up with one of the four... Uh, fittings that come on here and check it or also check the actual hose itself this hose hacks just has a threaded piece on the end of it that goes into each fitting and that threaded piece might fit into your cylinder so check that first but if not grab your spark plug check to see which one of the fittings uh, matches the thread uh, pitch or the the type of thread that you have on the spark plug that way you can use the proper fitting uh, now once you do that Depending on the vehicle that you that you have, whether it's a four cylinder, six cylinder, eight cylinder, what what I recommend you do is when you're about to do your compression test, look up some information about your vehicle's engine to see what the proper uh, PSI of compression your vehicle should have. Some vehicles uh, vary on compression, like on this one, it has um, the compression. Uh, test should be anywhere between 120 to 150 psi 150 psi being that the engine's in great shape no problems 120 meaning it's fair that's pretty much what the minimum should be at uh, give or take 30 psi that's why it's anywhere between 120 to 150 so if i don't i'm at 120 i know that the that cylinder is still okay it's not the greatest but it's still in good shape if it's at 150 then i know the vehicle's running tip-top shape and there's no problem with that cylinder so once I hook up uh, the compression tester and I figure what fitting that I need for the cylinders, I disconnect. I pulled all the, the spark plugs out. Not everybody might do this. They just might pull that one cylinder they're having a problem with, which is understandable. But in my case, I was replacing the plugs and that coil block, ignition coil assembly. So I went ahead and disconnected everything. As you can see, this is has one main harness right here to this whole coil block assembly. So I went ahead and disconnected that. So there's no power going into there. So I went ahead and found the fitting that I needed. I screwed it into the cylinder. I have the compression tester here. It has a quick connect right here on this uh, Harbor Freight one, so you're able to take it off and snap it on pretty fairly, pretty quickly, I mean. And it has a um, pressure relief valve right here where you're able to uh, just take the pressure off of it. So once you got the reading that you need, then if you want to go back to zero, hit this, releases the pressure, and it goes back down to zero. Now, what I recommend anybody do, and I usually do a compression test twice on each cylinder. And like you, have, like you see here on this piece of paper, I have one through six because this is a six cylinder engine. And what I'll do is I'll write each um, PSI on each cylinder while I'm doing it. And then I'll go back and do it again. Do one, two, three, four, five, and six again. And I'll write each one down to make sure they're pretty much the same. That way I know the test is not faulty and I know roughly the readings are about the same or if not close to the same. Um, depending sometimes the the tester might not work properly or you might have something hooked up wrong or you might not have the actual fitting screwed in all the way so on and so forth or sometimes you might have to take uh, the little o-ring off of the fitting because it might not fit because you you don't have a lot of threads on here as you can see look how many threads you have on your spark plug compared to the fitting itself 
Now, this isn't the fitting that goes on there, but as you can see, it's just kind of like a reference to let you know it doesn't have too much, but you should be able to get at least one or two turns on the spark plug tester itself. So once I do this, since this vehicle is driven by cable, meaning the throttle body has a cable running to it through the uh, accelerator pedal, as you can see, there's a cable right here. If I open this up, the throttle body opens and closes. So when I'm doing this, like I said, I have all the spark plugs out. I have everything disconnected. Before I turn the key on, I apply pressure all the way down to the throttle, the, the gas pedal, allowing the throttle body to open all the way up, and then I crank the vehicle. About eight seconds, or eight Mississippi, depending on how you want to count. So I just crank the vehicle over, count, you know, one through eight pretty slowly, and then shut off the vehicle. Then I'll come back and check the PSI on each cylinder. And that way I'll determine to see what's going on with each cylinder. Now, if I have roughly, like I said, this one has 150 to 120 PSI. So if I have around 120, 135 or 150 PSI, I know this vehicle is in good shape or that cylinder is in good shape. If I have anything coming down here like a 90, 60 or 30 or zero, then I know on that cylinder that there's a problem. And what could be the problem is that either one, I could have a bad valve, I could have a bad piston ring, or I could maybe have a blown head gasket, depending on the vehicle's um, history. Like, I don't know much about this vehicle. They bought it used. It was wrecked in the front a little bit. I've done some maintenance on it. I've done some, like, you know, um, basic maintenance, water pump, flushes, and so on and so forth. But now it's having this problem where I'm having a misfire. So I just went ahead and said, hey, I'm going to check the compression on each cylinder. That way I have a better... Um, I have some more information on this vehicle to see what's going on. This vehicle has about close to 300,000 miles on it. So it's been used and abused and these vehicles do take a lot of abuse. But like I said, anything with that many miles eventually is going to have some problems later on down the line um, because it's been through different owners. So you haven't been the first owner. So, so on and so forth, if you understand guys. So yeah, like I said, just write your information down that you need here and I'll show you what's going to come up right now on the compression tester just on this first cylinder. That way you guys know um, how to do a proper um, compression test on your vehicle. We go to the vehicle here, open the door. My foot pedals, my um, foot's all the way down on the accelerator. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Turn it off and go check the PSI. As you can see, it's a little under 120, so I'm gonna call it about 120. So, see, as you can see, we're back to zero. Now we're gonna check it again. I know 120 is on the first one. Like I said, we're gonna come back and do the same thing that I explained. Hold down the accelerator pedal or the gas pedal. Turn the key forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Turn it off. Come back. And check it again. As you can see, it's at right around probably about 100 PSI. I'm going to do another one just to be sure. So what I do is... The first one was at 120. Second one was at 100. Correct, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank it again just to check that cylinder again for you guys. Leave that there. I zeroed out my gauge. Come back over here. I said, make sure that the gas pedal is all the way down. Turn the key forward. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Turn the vehicle off. Come back to that number one cylinder and check it again. We're about at 100 PSI. So now I know that it's around 120 to 100 PSI. It should be around at 120 to 150. In between that or at 120, which minimum. The first test we did was 120. The second we did 100. And the third was 100. So I know that the number one cylinder is not in the best shape. But like I said, I'm going to keep doing the test all the way down. 
from the number one cylinder all the way down to number six or depending on how many cylinders your vehicle has whether it's a four six or eight cylinder and that guys is how you do a compression test pretty quick and simple not too hard self-explanatory fairly easy to do um, with the proper amount of tools um, the only thing I used was a 13 millimeter um, socket with the extension of course I have a cordless ratchet but you can use a ratchet a ratchet yourself take the coil block off disconnect the coil plug um, it's a uh, 5 8 spark plug socket put that on there with an extension and right here just a short extension with a stubby ratchet that way you can get in there nice and tight broke them all loose they shouldn't be that super tight they should be just in there once you crank down on the on the spark plug and got it tight in there just a quarter turn they don't need to be in there torqued down to 100 foot pounds because you could break um the spark plug inside the 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 cylinder and you don't want that because it's a big headache um but yeah guys pretty much that's how you do a compression test on a vehicle it's pretty self-explanatory it will differentiate depending on the vehicle that you're doing but this is kind of something that I can show you guys on how to do a compression test um, with uh, a very small amount of tooling, um, not a lot of super expensive tools, and that way you can kind of determine what's going on with your vehicle. And also do some research, guys, on your vehicle. Um, do some research about your um, vehicle's engine, any common problems or issues that these vehicles have, any TSBs with your technician bulletins, um, te uh, technical service bulletins and stuff like that, you know, problems that these vehicles have, um, depending on the year, make, and model of the vehicle that you have. Just do some information, guys. You know, use the internet to your access and to your availability, um, and just look up some information on your vehicle. And that way you're better informed and better, ed better educated on the vehicle that you have and know now the common problems, whether now you can either fix the problem or if the cylinder is really bad, now you know, hey, I might need to end up rebuilding this motor or buying another motor, a used motor with the same amount of miles or less miles in good shape. You know, whichever works for you guys. So thank you guys. I appreciate you guys watching the video. If you like this video, comment. Hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you very much. Jerry the Mo Mechanic. We're out of here. Thank you guys.